Experimentation and observation, that's all a true scientist cares about. And I am a scientist. Everything in the world is an experimental test subject. Of course, that includes myself as well. Now that I've collected the necessary initial data from all of you, I think we're ready to begin the experiment. Hello everyone, and welcome to my next commentary. Wait, sorry about that, I forgot to give the typical intro, didn't I? Hello, once again, this is the professor. There, I said it, now get over it. Internet video game reviewers, what can you say about them? Many would label them in two particular categories. The first would be AVGN, and the other one would be everyone else. Well, what I'm going to look at today wouldn't even be in the latter category as far as I'm concerned. What I'm trying to get at is these kids make everyone that we're supposed to hate, though I never got the memo on who we are required to hate as commentators in the first place, look like downright freaking geniuses. Today, I present to you 116 Randomness's review of Mario 64. So if you will allow me to rip off Youngblood Fantasy 91, let's take a look and we'll see what I have to say. I feel dirty now. Let us begin, you bastards! Hey guys, this is Momo Hey everybody, I'm Mario360. And I'm Mr. Awesome! I can already tell that we're off to a great start. We have one group of kids whose video is very blurry. They actually make Flippy Invaders seem good. And another one who has no idea how to set up lighting correctly while filming. I am literally jumping with joy at how awesome this is. And today is, is uh, our fraction of the reviews. Uh, Mario 64. Fantastic edit you have there. Not only do we have jump cuts off the ass, but we also have people getting cut off of mid-sentences. Hooray! The controls in the game weren't my first... Well, my first impression on the controls were, um, out of ten, two. And then they went up to about six, and then they went to ten, and now they're at, uh, I'd say, eight. Um, or... 9.5. I really love when someone obviously does not script their videos, filling them with awkward pauses and ums while randomly changing the scores they give to an aspect of a game they are reviewing, which of course makes them look credible. Who else figures that there must be a really good valid reason for all this? And here's why. Um, originally, it started uh, 2 out of 10 for my like um, average control level. And the reason why it was at that, it's at that, well, it was at that level, was because I originally played this game as a ROM. Um, I think I played it a long time ago, but I didn't really get what I was playing. But um, the first time that I really realized that I was playing it was a ROM on a computer uh, with an emulator, and the computer controls for it was like the worst controls ever. Well, that seems like a perfect way to judge a game based on how the controls are by using an emulator. Because as we all know, you really do get the full experience of a console platforming game that happens to be 3D when using a keyboard because those allow for the precise control necessary to play it correctly. That's not stupid on the least bit! Then I um, later played it on the Wii, no, the DS, which uh, busted it up a bit to six. They weren't the best on there, but they worked. And then I played it on Wii, which I loved. Um, the controls on the Wii, which were great. So I busted it up to about eight. And then I played it on N64 again, and it busted it way back up to 1.5 again. So you're doing a review of an N64 game, and you played all the other versions before ever playing the N64 version. Well, I guess that might work if you're trying to become a IGN reviewer. Um, the controls overall were pretty basic. It had a jump button! Uh, I highly recommend not playing it as a ROM because, um, uh, there's, uh, the D-pad and the joysticks are used a lot, um, which don't translate very well in ROMs. And, and emulators, um, but overall the controls were great on the N64 and the controller, as I said in my D GoldenEye 007 review, 
It's very multifunctional, and they used almost every function in this uh, game. Tim's story is that Princess Peach mysteriously invites Mario over for some cake. You ask me, that isn't the best invitation. What? We've already changed subjects? That was a horrible edit! But I must say, if you think this version is bad, just go ahead and take a look at the unedited version. And yes, this is real. For some reason, this guy, this guy, decided to upload both versions. And the uh, characters and voice acting, so here we go. Um, uh, cut that out. If you're editing this, like, a lot, cut out the, um, if, if you're editing it, then start soon. But if you're not, then I sound like an idiot. Especially when your girlfriend keeps getting kidnapped. <laughs> and what kind of cake did she make anyway? Hmm, well... Mario How big is it? I don't know. But Mario accepts the invitation and hurries on over there, but when he gets to the castle, he realizes that... Well, I think the player would realize that it's, uh... The place is deserted. Uh, obviously. And what makes it even more obvious... Holy crap, it's as if you're playing a Mario game! M. Night Shyamalan must have wrote this one. <laughs> yeah. If you... If it was the first time you heard that laugh in Super Mario 64, I bet it creeped you out. Uh... <laughs> I bet Sony Arcade kids would get nightmares after that, don't you think? Eh, yeah, anyway, uh... That story. <clears throat> Now for the characters and the voice acting. Now the characters, as you know, are they know all characters. We got Bowser, we got Mario, we got Toad, we got Princess Peach, we got all of them. And basically, um, the reason why I wanted to cover characters because we couldn't possibly know who's going to be in the game. It's not like we've played any Mario games before. Plus, you forgot that Yoshi was in this game as well. And I know that some of you already know what I'm going to say right now. Um, is not because I love the characters, it's because of Luigi. Now, originally Luigi was in the game, and they even showed a picture in um, Nintendo Power of him being inside the game. And it's a mystery why they took him out. Because he wasn't supposed to be in the original version of Mario 64? After all, this was called Super Mario 64, not Super Mario Bros. 64. My theory on why they took him out was because, um, uh, because they, they, they didn't really want him to, um, how can I say? They did, they did, they did, did, uh, um, uh. A long pause goes here. Um, the, 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 script your videos, you idiot! Um, they didn't want, uh, Luigi in it because of, um, they didn't want every game to be subtle. I think that the N64, um, Super, I mean, well, Mario 64, um, missing Luigi like mystery is like a part of gaming history and I not really mainly because no one cared that Luigi wasn't in the game I honestly never knew of this giant conspiracy theory behind Mario 64 personally think that they did that on purpose um, just to get it in like history books but um, you know it could be just a uh, technical problem but since they didn't tell us that's my theory but there's a lot of theories out there, and so, yeah. The voice acting, though, um, well, the voice acting, if I had to put it 1 out of 10, I would probably give it a, uh, um, I'd say negative 6. And the reason is because the voice acting is pretty, um, well, the, the good thing is there is voice acting. A lot of games back then didn't have voice acting, or their voice acting just sucked. But this game carried on the suckish route, which it didn't really improve anything for voice acting back then, but it did have voice acting, and it's one of the few Mario games that do, but it's not much, it's just like, the beginning, it's like, dear Mario, blah 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 castle, 
and uh, stuff like that. But so voice acting gets a negative six because it introduced voice acting to the Mario franchise and it helped bring this into the mainstream gaming. Do you even hear what you're saying? It's not horrible, you know. Um, it's just I I. I I preferred if they didn't have any voice acting, but you know, it's it's just something about gaming that you really want to get connected with the game, and um, yeah, something that voice acting can really do. After you get all seven seventy stars and go and confront Bowser. Actually, there were a hundred and twenty stars in total in the original game, not just seventy. Four. I mean. After I completed the game with 70 stars, I had no interest in it at all. You know, you could go get the other 50 stars so you can go ahead and meet Yoshi on top of the castle and be a completionist in Mario 64 like me! But of course, I think that was the DS version, wasn't it? No. The DS version, I think you need 60. Uh, no, you need twice as much, like... Or maybe you need like 120 stars in the DS version. But we're not talking about that. Oh, wait, we just talked about it. I love that joke. Uh... Oh, such witty banter coming from you. You arguing amongst yourselves and pointing out your own flaws. <laughs> hilarious. Just downright freaking hilarious. Well, in the... You need to stop looking up. I mean, some people are like, what you're looking up at? The <laughs> ceiling! <laughs> oh. Why did you keep this in the video? Did you really find it to be that funny? Well, allow me to correct you. It was mildly annoying and highly unnecessary. Anyway. Again, the minimum amount you need stars you need to complete the game are 70 and those 70 stars are pretty hard to get trust which, me which brings up my opinion you see despite all the stars being in that one world you just can't collect them like willy nilly after you collect one star you head back to the you head back to the hub which gets kind of annoying actually what? Letting you leave the world to have a chance to save after collecting a star so in the off chance that something happens to your N64 and ends up being turned off, which would end up making you do all that stuff all over again, and it only takes you about five seconds to jump back into whatever world you were in? How inconsiderate can Nintendo be? The N64 should have obviously had an autosave feature for the first N64 game to ever be created. Now, we both discuss graphics, but me first. Graphics for this game are pretty amazing if you were around during the Fantastic Four days. You see, um, Mario 60 and I were born around the time Fantastic 64 was out, so we experienced the Nintendo 64 graphics, which we still think are pretty amazing today. But, on the downside, it's not as great as some games today. What? Game graphics get better over the years? WHAT SORCERY IS THIS?! This is the sole reason why you don't compare modern games to classic retro games. Plus, just because you were born the same year the N64 came out, doesn't really mean you lived with and experienced N64 graphics to the fullest. But, I think... And the, even the DS version of the game improved on its graphics. It uses more polygons. Well... Plus it has more features, but back to the N64 game. Because constantly bringing up a game that we're not reviewing is totally relevant and does not distract from the review in the least bit. Right, guys? Yeah, so the graphics are okay in my opinion. But not as great as some other games. Yeah. So... Your opinion? Well, my opinion on the graphics is that, again, if you lived during the N64 era, they were the best graphics at their time. Uh, that's actually kind of debatable. Many would say that the PlayStation's graphics spanked the N64 hardcore, and I would happen to agree. Way to state your opinion as a fact, you Nimrod. And also, this was, this game actually set some records. 
first game that you have a camera behind the pl player and uh, probably the first 3D platformer out there. I would prove him wrong here, but I just don't have the time to stay games that had a camera behind the character, such as Rygar on the NES, or even games like Star Fox that use simulated 3D through polygons, or even bring up systems like the Jaguar that were using 3D graphics before the N64. According not necessarily true. The, the first actual 3D one, not just like some sort of pixelized attempt at it, but with polygons. Yeah. Well, that's according to the World Records book of 2008 for video games. Which would obviously be outdated in 2011, which means this is completely and totally irrelevant. <laughs> so, uh, what I think of the graphics, well, for some reason, I don't know what, why so, so many people want to, to hack this game's graphics so much. I mean, they're not that bad. I mean, I know they are not as good as as some games later in history, but and it's not as good looking as its DS counterpart. But come on, people, cut out with the graphic hacks. That's just gonna make them all hate you. Wow. No, there are plenty of other things in this review that would do just that. Not just this garbled mess of mumblekin you just spoke. Well, well now, now let's give our rating. I'm going to say, some people think this is the best game in history. I personally think that it's one of the best Mario games. Some people think it's the best Mario game, some people think it's the best Mar uh, game in history. Sorry, 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 sorry. Quick question. Why in the name of no Patrick Harris riding on a unicorn is part of your bed standing up against the wall? Sorry, people. I have slight OCD, and this kind of stuff just annoys me. I personally think that it's one of the best Mario games, and that's why, out of ten, I am giving it. Our final rating? Wait, why did you cut to this curly-haired bastard when you clearly stated that you're going to give your score? That's some piss-poor editing and planning right there. Is, uh, now... I give it a seven... No, I don't... I rate 7 out of 10! I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Now, for you Mario oh, 64 fanboys that. Hey! For you Mario 64 fanboys that are wondering why I give it such an average rating, here's why. And not just because I'm a Sonic fan, I just think that many games after were just improved on it. So, in other words, you didn't base your score on this game, but in comparison to the games that came afterwards. That's just stupid! You should judge a game based on its own strengths and weaknesses, not on the games that came after it. Yeah. I mean, they improved on that formula and such, but, and honestly, I don't think the, I think the graphics are okay and all, and... My point about, about it being annoying about jumping from the world, world you click the star into the main hub gets kind of annoying. Okay, I'm going to give my rating. But oh, wait, I am giving my... Oh, yeah, 3.5 out of 5 stars. Okay, my rating, I give it a... Uh, an 8 out of 10. Cut that <laughs> A 9.5 out of 10. So, yeah. So, only one of you morons are going to actually give reasoning behind your score? Okay, well, it is your review, and if you want to make yourselves seem like piss-poor video game reviewers, then go right ahead, no one's stopping you. Also, check out, um, hopefully I can annotate this, if this is my own video, or if you're watching somebody else's channel, um... If it's any of your videos, you might want to cut this part out, but for my channel, check out right here for Mr. Awesome Mark 360s channel. To all, happy gaming. Okay, let's get this over with by covering my overall thoughts of what we just watched here. These two idiots right here need to learn to stand still and stop swaying back and forth while talking. And need to stop constantly looking at the ceiling while recording something. 
The point of recording something with a camera is to look at the camera while talking unless you really know what you're doing, and you guys obviously do not. Also, why did you leave all the idiotic bantering and pointless statements that had nothing to do with the review when you so obviously have editing software at your ex disposal? Those parts were not funny in the least bit. They were actually highly irritating and distracting. So for my final score, I would give this review a 2 out of 10. No, wait, wait, wait. Maybe a 4 out of 10. No, or no, possibly. How about let's do a 9 out of 10. Or maybe just a negative 296 out of 10. Why? Because if you morons can constantly change your scores for no absolute reason whatsoever, then so can I. Oh, and 116 Randomness, if you hate this video and it pisses you off, just wait till I get to your piss poor Skyrim review. This is the professor and I bid you all a very fine adieu. God, I was mean today. Okay, class is dismissed. <clears throat>